Welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, July 22nd. So glad you can join us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. There will be no immediate ban on the biodegradable alternatives to single-use plastics that have tested positive for high levels of fluorine. What of this from Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy Minister Cook Humphrey? Just days after the July 1 start date of the ban on single-use plastics, Commerce Minister Dwight Sutherland raised concern about some of the replacement products coming into Barbados. As a result, he called for importation standards to be implemented. Today, Minister Humphrey made it clear that government is very much on top of the matter, pointing out that it was his ministry who instructed the Barbados National Standard Institute to ensure the containers were tested. He told reporters government will continue to seriously monitor the development while asking importers to help with the process of filtering out any undesirable alternatives. We had the NSA, the Ministry of Health, uh, various departments, and we had a conversation around the way forward with the containers. How should we proceed? And because of the state of the world, the truth is that there is no place in the world that is able to handle the, the, the polyfluorinated alcohols or perfluorinated alcohols in a way that says we should ban them. So we determined that we just need to have further in, in information. And we brought all the, the major importers into a room and we said, look, this is what we found. And we need you now to have conversations with your suppliers and that over time, gradually, we could move to a state where we don't have these PFA uh, containers in, in the region, well in Barbados, certainly. And that is where we are now. So that we've asked the suppliers, therefore, to go back and, and for every shipment that they bring in, they have to give us the composition, what's inside the containers, and that we will continue to do testing. Minister Humphrey also assured the country that the products pose no threat to humans or the environment. For the model that we are following closely is the Washington State model. And what Washington State has done, because this is an international issue, it's not a Barbados issue. And what Washington State has done is that they've said they will give until the year 2022 to allow PFA containers to be used. And obviously this is, this is in the U.S. To allow these PFA containers to be used. And that after that point, if the world has gotten to a place where it can use other containers, then they will then implement a ban. So that's in 2022, cons with the proviso that the world has moved to a place where they have alternative containers. There is no risk immediately of you eating from any of these containers, and it cause and it would cause you some health risk immediately. The, the, the reality is that the PFA level speaks more so to the compostability of the container. And what they found is that sometimes when these these containers compost over time. The amount of PFAs that is found in the soil or plants that grow from it contains the same PFA that would have been in the container. But that's a long, long-term process consequent on composting. Health authorities are upgrading the island's Ebola plan to ensure the country can respond effectively if the need arises. The move comes on the heels of the World Health Organization's declaration of the July 17 Ebola outbreak in the Democratic Republic of Congo as a public emergency of international concern. In a statement today, Health Minister, that's Lieutenant Colonel Jeffrey Bostick, said he met with senior officials of his ministry as well as representatives from the Bridgetown Port, the Grantley Adams International Airport and the Queen Elizabeth Hospital to review the level of preparedness. The ministry assured the public that it will continue to take steps to strengthen its levels of pre preparedness and that these measures will inform the Ebola plan. Big celebrations today as Corrine Clark and her daughter Trinity returned home with gold and silver medals from the World Championship of Performing Arts held in Long Beach, California. Trinity won one gold and two silver, while her mother captured one gold, one silver. Trinity was feted by Admiral Nelson, Shirley Stewart and Edwin Yearwood, among others. I won two silvers and a gold and I'm very happy that I have two. How did you get in contact with this particular program? It was in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. How did you get in contact with this particular program? Auntie Marcia. Auntie. My godmother, Auntie Marcia, told us about Mokopa. And um, because I've been doing a lot of things yeah. here, she recommended me going overseas to represent Barbados. And then we made, my mom made 
for the right with the different people. Um, I, I just lost a lot And this is the problem was the weeks we're talking about. Yeah. What was qualifying like? Um, it was good. I was a little nervous at first, but we didn't know the people. So what happens to Trinity from here? What is going to happen with your, your gold award and your, your silver awards? Have you made contact with any other players in the business to maybe even go further? Yeah. Kareen Clark said it was a humbling experience and she will ensure Barbados will be represented again next year. Even though we didn't make the semi-finals and the finals, we were still vying for medals. And that's what and we were surprised. I think I was most surprised. And we were really happy that we got this. The Philippines was like 168 contingent strong, powerful, and they had their whales and their chant. I mean it was euphoric. And all I tell myself is next year, y'all can't help sing the Beijing. So I, I really believe that this is something the Ministry of Culture um, and Minister John Kay, I know he's all for this, he congratulated us as well, Trinity's principal congratulated her as well. They all need to invest in this and we're going to take away more, more goals, more silver. Prime Minister Mia Motley celebrated 30 years in politics at the weekend, heaping praises on her family, friends, political colleagues and constituents in the St. Michael North East. At a special church service at the Grace Hill Moravian Church on Sunday, she noted her journey has been fulfilling and pledged to continue to provide the leadership her constituents and the people of Barbados needs. What motivates me is the relationship and friendship that I've made with each of you. And hence for me, the point of celebration has always been the relationship with this community and not the mechanisms by which that relationship is given expression. I want to say to you that as long as there is breath in my body, in or outside of Parliament, you are my family, you are my friends, and long may we walk together in fellowship, but also in a mission to make this country and this community the best that we can make it. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. For the region now, a warning to Jamaicans to brace for a hike in food prices. President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Lemoff Fulton, says farmers are under pressure because of prevailing drought conditions and consumers will have to pay more for local produce. Speaking with TVJ News, Mr. Fulton said the full brunt of price increases associated with shortages should begin to hit consumers next month. Further afield, thousands filled the streets of San Juan today to demand that Puerto Rico Governor Ricardo Rosello resign over offensive chat messages. The latest scandal to hit the island is still struggling to recover from deadly 2017 hurricanes. Rosello announced yesterday that he would not seek re-election next year, but that had little effect on the crowds who called for him to immediately surrender the governorship. More in this report from Reuters Television. Al próximo cuatrenio, eso está bien. 
nos dijo que renunciaba a la presidencia del partido, eso está bien, pero ahora nos tiene que decir que renuncia a la gobernación. And that's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.populistity.pb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.